So London is 20 months old. I think it is about time that he sleep in his own bed. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. I'm a family medicine physician and a mom of two. And today we're gonna talk all about sleep training. So if you're ready, let's get started. Um, first off, I just wanna say that whether you decide to sleep train or not, sleep training is not a necessity. In some cultures, co-sleeping is perfectly fine, while in other cultures, we want kids to sleep on their own in their own rooms. And so according to AAP, American Academy of Pediatrics, the recommendation is that kids and infants stay in their parents room until 12 months old not many of us do that even though that is the recommendation so my recommendation to you is do what is best for your family and do what you feel that is best for you and your kids all right that being said this is our story this is how we slept trained Wyatt and how we plan to sleep train London so hopefully that this just gives you a starting point so with Wyatt, we started sleep training him around five months old. And that is because he started waking up like every hour. <laughs> and I had a crazy residency schedule and I, I just couldn't do it. I was so exhausted. So the best thing for us at that point was moving him into his own room. And then what we did to try to sleep train him was called the gradual extinction method, also commonly known as the Ferber method. And what this is, is that we placed him sleepy in his crib and then we left, he cried, we come back in like three minutes, soothe him, he put him back down and left, he cried, came back in five minutes, soothe him, put him down, left, he cried, and then we would start coming in every 10 minutes. And, you know, after a while, after about 30 minutes, he would fall asleep. And it took around three to four nights before he started falling asleep on his own and slept through the night. And honestly, like it was amazing. I do want to note though that we did have to re-sleep train him after every vacation, every illness, um, every new tooth or like growth spurt that he does because he got used to sleeping with us or you know all those things again. So it's not that we did it once and it was done. We had to do it multiple times throughout like him growing up. But now it's awesome because we just put him down and we tell him like it's bedtime and we read him stories. And then around two to three o'clock in the morning, if he does wake up, then he comes like just into our bed. And that's totally fine because he fell asleep on his own around eight or nine o'clock. So I did do some research behind the gradual extinction method. And the biggest concern was the psychological impact that it might have on your children for letting them cry it out and the bond between parent and child. And what they found is that the cortisol levels of infants uh, at the morning and lunchtime were not significantly different. They also found that mom's mood was not significantly affected as well. They followed up with the kids in one year and saw no significant psychological effects um, in that nature. Like Wyatt and I have an amazing relationship and he's just like the happiest child, even though we did this method. And so I think that is safe and that we should not shame any mother or parent for how they choose to um, you know, sleep train their children. With London, <laughs> with London, um, it was totally different because we co-slept the whole time. Like we we're basically still co-sleeping now. And the reason why was because one, we did not have enough space. So we did not have space to move him into his own room. And secondly, he slept just fine, like co-sleeping. Like he was a good sleeper when he slept with us. Like he woke up once or twice to nurse, but I, I like side nursed. And so I didn't really have to get up at all. And then both of us went 
straight back to sleep. So it wasn't an inconvenience for me and I was still getting enough sleep. So now he's a lot bigger. He's like sleeping sideways and kicking us and just, I don't know, it, our sleep is just a lot more disruptive now. And so Stan and I agreed that maybe it's time to like move them into their own room. So before we get into the different methods that are commonly used. I just want to put up this graph right here that shows you the different types of ages and the recommended sleep for each age. So this includes naps. So for London, it's around 14 hours that we aim for. And so if he naps too much during the day, then he's going to have a hard time falling asleep at night. So we always keep that in mind. Wyatt, we don't let him nap at all because if he gets any sort of naps, he is not going to go to bed. All right. So keep those uh, numbers in mind when trying to sleep train. So I discuss this with my patients all the time that in order for anyone to have good sleep and avoid insomnia is to have good sleep habits and sleep hygiene, a good sleep routine. So with kids, they are so active running around and playing and learning and exploring all the time. And so it is really important to tell them and signal to them when it is time to wind down and start getting ready for bed. You know, I think it's even hard for adults to suddenly shut things off when your mind is going at 100 beats per minute and so it's going to be hard for kids as well it's important to tell them okay now it's time to start relaxing and getting your body ready for bed and what we call this is a sleep routine and good sleep hygiene for us specifically i try to dim down the lights when the sun goes down and then we turn off all electronics at least one hour before bed and around 7.30 to 8 o'clock is when we start brushing our teeth, um, getting into our pajamas, and then after that we get them into bed and then read them at least two books. And then after that is when we say that, okay, now it's time for bed. Um, you're going to go to sleep now. So that is our sleep routine. It doesn't have to be a lot, but it just signals to them that this is time to slow down and get ready for bed. So we talked about the Ferber method, which is the gradual extinction method. Another commonly used method is called bedtime fading. And what that is, is putting your kids to sleep when they are tired, just whenever they are tired. And this is hard for us because if we did that, like Wyatt would just never go to bed. He has so much energy. Um, but say your child is sleepy around 10 o'clock and you slowly get them ready for bed and put them bed to bed at 10. The next day you would bring it back. So you would put them to bed sleepy at 945 the next day 9 30 the next day 9 15 the next day 9 and you would just keep going back until you find a time that is good for you and your family as i said that way it didn't work for us because if he could why it would just stay up all night long <laughs> Um, the way that we plan to sleep train London is more of like a comfort fade. I don't know if it's an actual thing, but what we plan to do is that we put him into bed and then we just sit on the side of the bed until he falls asleep. Uh, London right now doesn't want to do that. He still wants to play. So every time he gets up, I just put him back down. And then he gets up, tries to go somewhere, I put him back down. He gets up, I put him back down, I put him back down. Literally, I did that last night for like 30 minutes. Like he'll just get up and get put, I put him back down. And it took about 30 minutes for him to fall asleep. But eventually, I hope that he'll be able to fall asleep on his own. And then I would be able to slowly move back further and further away from his bed. So right now, I'm just like sitting next to his bed. And hopefully, once he he is able to settle and just lay there and not get out and then I will move like further maybe to the foot of the bed and maybe to the door later and so so on and so forth um, but right now I'm just like sitting next to his bed so right now we don't have enough rooms for the kids to get their own room but the room that they're in right now is fairly large and so we were really considering on getting a bunk bed because I thought that you know Wyatt would really enjoy that um, but ultimately decided just to get another car bed. 
So Wyatt has a blue car bed and then London got this new Batman car bed. And the reason why we got that was because it is close to the ground. It's the same as his brother's so that they won't get jealous. And if he ever wanted to, like he can just get out of the bed himself and then come into our room. So he has that sense of security still that we are just right there, just down the hall if he wanted to come to us. Um, so maybe there's that little safety net there. We also bought a weighted blanket. Um, weighted blankets are really good for people who have anxiety, who have like a sensory disorder or with kids with autism, all those things like it really helps because it gives them like also a sense of security. We're hoping that that helps as well. So he feels like someone is still with him in the bed. So yeah, those are all the things that we're planning to do so far. We have not been completely successful with London as of yet. As long as he's able to fall asleep in his bed and if in the middle of the night, say at 3 a.m. he comes over, then I'm totally fine with that. You know, Stan and I agreed that if he woke up before two and he came over, then we would go and put him back into his bed again. But he, if he came after two, then it is totally fine with us. All right. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something. I gave you a little starting point. I will give you guys updates if I become successful. Follow us on Instagrams for live updates. Um, yeah, if you guys haven't already, subscribe so you don't miss a video. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.